Hi, and welcome to Experience Inspirations. Welcome and press your way on in. Press your way right on in and press your way throughout your day. Welcome. Real freedom. Real freedom. What do you think and feel when you hear the word freedom? It's usually associated with the right to live as we please and pursue our own dreams and am ambitions. However, Jesus has a deeper aspect of freedom that pertains to the state of our souls. God wants us to live from every eternal form of bondage that prevents us from becoming the person he created us to be. I'll give you a few reasons of what Jesus came to us for, for freedom, for real freedom. The first one, the reason he came is to seek and save those which are lost in the world. That's in Luke 19 and 10. The primary reason he came to live with us on earth was to pay our sin debt in full on the cross so we all would become the children of God. Secondly, so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. That's John 10 and 10. Salvation is just the beginning of our Christian life. When we discover and live in God's will, we can enjoy the fullness and the abundance that it has to offer us. And thirdly, to set captives free. That's in Luke 4 and 18. Whether we believe it or not, all of us have been held captive at one point or another. One point or another now. But Jesus wants to reveal those hidden areas of bondage and lack of con human control that we may have so we can deal with them and live in true freedom with them. Next, I'm going to speak on the, some of the causes of captivity. From that's preventing us from experiencing real freedom in the world. The first one is errors. Some people, some people are in bondage to false beliefs about Christ. And it's not to us to per se call them out on it, but you continue to preach the word and speak the word of knowledge in hopes that only God, not hopes but by faith, that God is going to change their knowledge and heart so that they can accept the real freedom. God accepts us. God accepts. We'll never know what's good and how much it is sufficient. Others have some awkward ideas about what's going on and what's going to happen in heaven. Some some of us, not everyone, is usually believing that we're all going to heaven. Now, others think only there's a specific group that is worthy of heaven because of their rituals or family origin. That, that's not true. All these ideas lock, lack people in a spiritual, lock them into a spiritual jail, and none of them are true. Next is evil habit, evil habits. A prevailing attitude today is this is my life. I can do what I please, how I want, when I want. However, toleration of sinful practice results in enslavement of them. Yeah, it's your life and you can do as you please. But it's also, if it's sinful, it's taking you into its own jail. And we all have some of those sinful, even I, have some of those sinful habits that's in locking us into a spiritual jail. But God can break you out of that jail. No bondsman, no judge, no paperwork, but God. Next is lying and deception. Now some people have an honest lifestyle of doing this. Especially if they fear rejection or growing out of telling those lies. They get so comfortable with it. To, it's like someone telling you it's raining outside and if you believe them without going to that window and seeing for yourself that it's truly raining. They're just that comfortable and Smooth with telling you a lie. 
Lastly, I want to talk to you about how the truth will set you free. And once you're free, you're free indeed. And that will be three things I want to point out to you. The truth about our salvation. We got to recognize that freedom is based on a relationship with Christ. And that's indwelling with him, communion with him, reading his word, inviting him in at the beginning of your day, throughout your day, good or bad situations, just praise him because in every situation, it is a good outcome. Every situation, it's a good, especially if it's bad, it's a good to come out of it. We just have to ask God to make that revelation if you don't see it for yourself at that present time. Next is the truth about our positions. Now, we are all children of God, and we are all joint heirs with Christ. Accepted, forgiven, and spiritually alive. His plans for our lives wants any hidden bondages to be out in the forefront so that he can help us deal with them. Not in the forefront of society, but in the forefront of him. Confess it to him. Take it to him. Father, I'm falling short of your glory, of this bondage. Whatever that bondage may be, take it to him. Because only he can break it. And give you the power through the Holy Spirit to break it. And fasting. And lastly, the truth about our possessions. As children of God, we have divine power, promises, and a nature which provides everything we need to live a godly life. Second Peter. Second Peter. One, three, three through four. Oh, now, whatever it may be in your life that's difficult to let go of, and whatever it is that may be calling you bondage or hindering your spiritual growth, only you know. That's cause that's causing you not to experience real freedom with Christ. You would have to confess that and trust by faith that He's going to deliver you from it. Also. You got to be willing to ask the Lord to reveal and heal that area of bondage that's causing you to be a struggle. And we all have it. Some have it. Some it may be with food. Some may be with alcohol, drugs, smoking, gambling, addiction of another human. It's whatever it may be. Clothes, having the latest, latest items. Just ask God. Whatever it may be. And lastly... What price are you and your loved ones paying by living in that personal captivity? What price are you and your loved ones paying by living in that captivity? We talked about real freedom. Real freedom. From experience inspirations, I would like to thank you for listening. I ask that you subscribe to the channel so each and every time I upload a video or a short, you'll be notified and have an opportunity to view it. Like, comment, and subscribe. May this be made a real freedom be a uplifting to you and your family. I love you, and until we speak again, may God blessings be over you.